In this video, we're going to go over an example of how to calculate a one sample t test and the effect size for a one sample t test. Before we do, though, I want to reiterate the differences that I went over in the last video between the one sample z test and its effect size and the one sample t test and its effect size. You'll see a lot of similarities between all of these formulas. The numerators are the same regardless, all four formulas. If you're doing a hypothesis test or an effect size or whatever, you're always going to take the sample mean minus the population mean that you're comparing against for all of these. The denominator is what differs. So for hypothesis tests, standard error will always go in the denominator. For a z-test, that's true standard error, standard deviation in the population divided by the square root of your sample size. For a one sample t-test, it's estimated standard error, made to sort of approximate true standard error. And for that, you're going to take sample standard deviation divided by the square root of your sample size. So for the effect sizes, it's a very similar sort of story. When it's a z-test, we're going to use the true population parameter, the actual population standard deviation. But for a t-test, it's going to be sample standard deviation. Again, made to sort of estimate or approximate the true population parameter, sigma. And so we're going to sort of ignore the z formulas here. We're not doing a z-test. We're going to do a t-test and the effect size. Uh, the last thing I'll mention, though, right before I sort of erase these, or blur them out, I guess, is that for a t-test, right, think about when you're going to do this. It's the same situation no matter what, right? You're always looking at a sample mean and comparing it to a population mean. But for a t-test, this is great because you can do a t-test even when you don't know anything about variability in the population. And that's the key difference. So here we're going to be looking at a variable extroversion, right? How extroverted versus introverted people are. I'll talk about the study in a minute. But for extroversion, we don't really know what the true population variability of extroversion is is. And so instead of doing a z-test, we're going to do a t-test. We're going to approximate population variability by simply calculating the sample standard deviation, a measure of sample variability. And so I'm going to blur out all of the z-test stuff for now. It's great to keep as a reference, but we know already that for this study, it's not going to be appropriate. So we're getting rid of that for the time being. So let me tell you what this study is all about. Here we wanted to know whether flirting with someone increases how extroverted they act. To test this, we recruited 10 different men, all tested separately. But as these men came into the lab and were waiting on the experiment to begin, we employed sort of a confederate, which is what we call a trained undercover experimenter. So these men just thought this confederate was another participant, just another person waiting in the lab. But in reality, it was a trained undercover experimenter in on the situation. And what the confederate was trained to do is to basically flirt for a minute or two with the man as he was waiting on the study to begin. And so we know already that in the population, extroversion on average, let's say it's 14. Okay, let's use that as our comparison point. So we want to know, does the average extroversion at the end of the study, after they were flirted with, change from 14? Is this average extroversion score that we're seeing from these men after being flirted with significantly different than the population average of 14? So let's write what we already know. We're going to do the one sample t-test and the effect size. Notice we, again, have to do the one sample t-test because we don't know what sigma is. We simply don't know population standard deviation of extroversion. So we're going to approximate it using S, sample standard deviation. At this point, by the way, I'll pause and mention that if you're at all uncomfortable with calculating sample standard deviation or any of the measures of variability by hand, I really encourage you to pause this video, go back to one of my previous videos that talks about measures of variability and how to calculate them, review that and get some practice in because that's basically the only challenging part of these problems, calculating sample standard deviation. But for the time being, we already have mu. Uh, we already have n, our sample size, right? That's going to come into play here. We can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different people in this study. So our sample size n will be 10. So what are we missing? Uh, basically just the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. I'm going to gloss over how I actually get these numbers because, again, I trust at this point that you can calculate a uh, sample mean and x bar. 
and I trust that you can calculate sample standard deviation. And if you can't, I trust that you'll be sort of courageous enough to go and review that and or learn that for the first time. So I'll just tell you that X bar here, the sample mean, if I were to add up all these numbers and divide by 10, our sample size in this case, is going to be 19.8. So look, it seems like after being flirted with, the men in this study became a little bit more extroverted than average. And so what we're doing now is looking at number one with the hypothesis test, was that significant? Does our p-value come out to be less than 0.05 after calculating our test statistic? And second of all, how big is that effect? How big of a difference does it make to be flirted with on your extroversion scores? Okay, last but not least, we need S, our st uh, sample standard deviation, excuse me. That is 6.015. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate this out and reduce down. It's going to be pretty straightforward. First of all, let's start with the actual hypothesis test. That's going to be our sample mean, 19.8, minus the population parameter that we're comparing against, which is 14, divided by S, sample standard deviation, 6.015. And that needs to be divided by the square root of your sample size. Don't forget this step, right? This is standard error, not standard deviation in the denominator. So we're going to divide by the square root of our sample size, which is 10. And if you reduce this down, you plug it into a calculator or whatever, you're going to end up with 3.05. I'll go ahead and tell you that this is large enough. This test statistic represents an extreme enough difference between the sample mean and the population parameter such that P would be less than 0.05. With an alpha level of 0.05, our p-value is less than that alpha level. We've passed our sort of threshold for our standard of evidence. We would say that this is a significant effect. Statistically significant, it does appear that flirting with someone makes them significantly more extroverted, at least for men, which is what we're seeing here. Okay, for the effect size, last but not least, once you've done the hypothesis test, the effect size is very straightforward. We already have everything we need for it, which, by the way, will almost always be the case. For basically every analysis we're ever going to learn here, once you've already done the hypothesis test, the effect size just takes two extra seconds because you've already calculated everything you need. So for here, numerator is the same. It's going to be 19.8 minus 14 divided by, here's where we don't have standard error. Now it's just simple sample standard deviation, 6.015. And if you reduce this down, you plug that into a calculator and get that done, it's going to be 0 0.96. And how do we interpret this? Well, remember that anything greater than 0.5 is considered a large effect. So we would probably call this a very large effect, or if we're being conservative, we would just call this large. And that's how you calculate a one-sample t-test and the effect size for a one-sample t-test.